Hey guys, so in this one we're going to be doing the gel coat restoration, so looking at the bottom side of the hull and restoring it from that kind of flaky old dry faded red to this, into this, a, uh, a deep glossy red and a very bright white hull from, from front to back with just about no imperfections on it anywhere. Doesn't do it justice in the light. So to get that result, I ended up using or trialing quite a few very well-known products that have a very good reputation through a lot of different regards. And I've summarized here what worked, which is everything here, and what didn't. So if you want the quick answer before you watch the video, how I got that result was a pretty aggressive sand back using the 125 mil orbital sander not using a rotary for the sanding, uh, was too uncontrollable. The orbital was a lot better. I went 400, 800, 1200, 2000 with the grits. Now I wouldn't have had to go as deep or as remove as much material as I did if it wasn't for those letter imprints on the side of it. Um, they went quite a way down through the gel coat. So a lot of material had to be removed. I wouldn't go that deep. Otherwise there was just no need. Now, I missed 600 because I didn't have any. I then found when I got onto 1200, there were still scratches from the 400, so I had to go back to 800 and do it again. So if I was doing this again, in here would be a 600 grit as a pass I would do. Onto polishing and wax, I used a large rotary sander, not an expensive one, it was only about a hundred bucks. These pads I found were pretty good. Uh, they're a Makita one, they're only about $9 from Sydney Tools. These are quite a firm pad as well. They're good for removing a fair bit, of, fair bit of product. And for the polishing, I used the Meguiar's high gloss polish. As you'll see, I didn't think the oxidation remover was very good in the end, and the chemical deoxidizer did next to nothing. In terms of wax and protection, I just used the Meguiar's Marine flagship wax. Um, it came in a kit, all three came in a kit for about $100. As far as I know, that stuff's worked really well. It's retained it to be pretty glossy so far and we're about the four or five month mark and I've had plenty of uses out of it. And I just applied it by hand. I didn't, didn't get any benefit to applying it with a, with a pad. Okay, so we've got dozens of old decals. Best way to get rid of them. Heat gun and one of these plastic razor blades. I got this off eBay, it came with 100 blades, it was $10. Righto, so with everything stripped off it, I'm now going to look at actually trying to restore this faded gel coat. <clears throat> so first it's just going to be a really aggressive scrub with acetone. I've actually already done that. I'm going to do it once more though. And then um, I'm going to look at a variety of products and see, see what actually works best. I think these sections where there was a sticker previously, they're probably going to be the hardest to restore. And I don't know if we're ever going to fully do it, but we'll see. So first we've got a set of 1200 grit sanding pads. We've got some 2000s as well. In terms of products, I've <clears throat> got a few. I've seen a lot of videos and remarkable photos of this stuff. The Australian Peak Chemicals mob that do this. So I'm probably the most interested to try that. It's a chemical deoxidizer. It's no scrubbing, it's no buffing. You just leave it on and let it sit. And then I think this was, I got the kit for about 70 bucks off Amazon, which was good, which was a Meguiar's system. So I've got their oxidation remover, their high gloss polish and their wax. So let's give it a go. All right, first up, another go with some acetone. <coughs> Still a few little bits of silicon floating around. All right, so I'm first gonna give it a hit with this before I do any sanding and see what that'll actually do. Now that says just apply with part of a sponge, so. It's funny, 
funny smelling stuff. Definitely smells chemical like. I'm going to put that on a time lapse. All right, it's been 10 minutes. We'll take it away with just some clean water, like it says. It's definitely done something. It's not night and day like I've seen in the ads. I've got a feeling this stuff is gonna work really well on the white stained brown areas, sort of around the back of the transom. So I've had another idea for a deoxidizer. I have seen this done, so I borrowed some off my neighbour. It's actually hydrochloric acid, just like out of one of those big black ones you buy from the hardware shop. So let's give this a scrub. That didn't really do anything at all. Righto, here we go. It's after two hits of the, the deoxidizer. I reckon that's about the same from both the acid and the deoxidizer. Either way, not much of a change to this to this gel coat. All right, so now I'm going to give it a hit with a 1200 grit. So that made a big difference. Now, I'm gonna try two other things here. Now that the pores are open to this, I'm gonna try and use the deoxidizer once again. And I'm gonna try just hand sanding with the 1200 even more. I'm just doing a tiny area, I'm just worried of rubbing through it. All right, I would say that that has completely removed the stamping from these old numbers. Uh, the little square at the top, again, like an ever so slight difference, but not much. So to me, it's looking like a wet sand of this with the 1200 grit is on the cards. Righto, so that's a 1200 wet sand of that area. As you can see, it's pretty much gotten rid of the letters. They're still faint. I'm hoping the 2000 will take the last of them off. I'm still afraid of going too hard though and cutting it through. I know, 2000 grit, here we go. Alrighty, that's the 2000 grit done. It's looking pretty consistent. And again, the numbers have further disappeared. I think now you can only see them if you really try. Next time I'm gonna give this a go. It's the Oxidant Meguiar's Oxidation Remover. I've pulled this off because I want to try it on the sanded surface and the non-sanded surface and see if sanding will benefit this much. Now on the bottle it says best use with a Meguiar's cutting pad on a rotary machine. It's not a Meguiar's pad but that's what we're going to use. Yeah, eh? No, you're right. What's going on? Right, eh? Uh, random mate drop by. Back at it. That's it done with the deoxidizer stuff. Um, that made a big difference, actually, but nowhere as good as the stuff that was sanded with 2000 and 1200 beforehand. Next up is this Marie Maguire's high gloss polish. I'm gonna try that over all 
multiple sections. So the bottle doesn't specify the kind of pad, it just says using a buffing pad. Now I've got these wool ones which are usually pretty good, so that's what I'm going to use. That's kind of better light. Um, that's after a good polish using both my rotary and the, the DA polisher. Now, there's pretty much no difference between the area we used that first deoxidizer polish and the area we did and then used the normal polish. Um, big difference between the area that was first sanded and not sanded and um, almost no difference from the areas we used the initial chemical deoxidizer or the hydrochloric acid. Right, so the winners are, and the process I'm going to use for this whole boat. <clears throat> no surprise, it's the process with the most work. Orbital sander, 1200 grit, followed by 2000 grit, doing a wet sand. Next up is the rotary polisher. I'm thinking of investing in one of the big, like big long ones with the 180 mil disc, a wool disc. I might grab one tomorrow, but that worked pretty well. Uh, using the Meguiar's polish. Finished off with just the, the Meguiar's wax by hand. That's what I found worked. What didn't work really was these. Um, you know, if you wanted to do the whole thing with that, you could, I think it'd just take a long time sanding speeds it up look i've seen videos of this stuff working really well on the red it didn't really work at all um and that you know that wasn't bad but the Maguire's was better so we're outside in the sun uh, today's going to be the day we bring the left hand side back to life it's, you still see it's very very flaky got sticker sticker marks um this is the area we did the sort of practice on the other day and you know, the shine was good, but the letters were still very, very visible. So this is what's possible with the system I've sort of worked out. And this is the other side all done. It's a beautiful, deep, glossy red. And the, all the letter marks are just about gone. So I worked out that we could do a fair bit more aggressive sanding to this without rubbing through it. There's a little section on the other side I rubbed through. I basically wanted to see how far you could go um, that was very forgiving. So I added two more, a few more tools to the arsenal. I've got some 400 grits and some 800 to uh, just help with a much quicker sort of material removal. I also fried my little eBay sander, so I went and bought a proper one. Not a crazy, not a crazy Makita one, but not a not your Tool Pro super cheap one either. So any sort of ledge or lip like this one has, you will burn through really quickly wet sanding. So cover that up, get that sort of plastic masking tape stuff, and actually hold up to the water. First up, we've got a 400 grit, and I'm using a good backing pad. I rate these on any sort of curved surface. So for that little section at the back, the letters and the old badging is now sanded back out. And uh, yeah, that's how much it took. Probably like eight or nine passes, wet sanding with the 400. There's a lot of work in this. Just doing the 400 will take probably most of today. So I actually burnt out my new big, uh, my new big polisher. I don't know, it's got water through it or something. It's just not turning on. So I resorted back to my little trusty Bosch dual action. And, um, you know, having after done a few bits now, it's really not that much slower than the big rotary polisher. It's a lot more controlled as well, and I'm not getting sort of the deep scuff marks. So it's taking maybe 20, 30 percent longer. But I'd, I'd honestly say now, do it for the job. It's a little Bosch. So this is the sort of section size I'm working with. I think that's a really good size. You're not sort of straining either side, leaning either way. It's a good consistent cover of it and I'm um, using about one disc per upper and bottom so 
nice little get two sections out of one bisque. So that's the 400 sanding done. I've given it a really good wash and scrub down because I want to get all those 400 grit particles off. Because if we do the next grit up, we we'll just polish them all into it and leave more scratches. So that is the 800 all done. And now with the 800 done, I'm going to take this tape off because from here up, I will start to sand this with the 12 and 2000 going forwards. It's a new day, it's all dried out now. Last sand we did was 800. Today we're on to 1200. And I've pulled that tape off because it's time we start, start sanding this back. Righto, 1200 wet sand, here we go. So that's a 1200 done. So you end up in a nice concoction of our uh, polished fiberglass and resin on you. Final treatment. Polish with a new waffle pad and the Meguiar's polish. So that's sort of the general technique and process. Um, started at a pretty low speed, sort of let it do it cut, do its cutting work, and uh, finish it on the high speed, and it brings out a pretty good shine, I reckon. So since the last clip in this video, it's been about five months. This is how it's held up after its final wax five months ago. It's held up pretty well just in the last few weeks. I reckon it needs another one and I never actually recorded doing the wax. So here we go. We're using that Meguiar's flagship marine wax. It is put on quite differently to how you would put on a car wax. You apply, apply it a lot more liberally. The best result I've found. Um, I found applying it just with these things. The hand pads work just as well as the machine. All the machine did was kind of spit it or splatter it everywhere. So I just use these for now. So once you've done a whole side, whereas a car you'd be working in kind of little panels or square foot, leave it. It's in, it's on really thick. Just leave it for a good sort of five or 10 minutes and you come back and you can almost see that it's, it's sucked up so much of that wax because it's so dry. And if you had a look closer before, you could see all these little microscopic oxidation holes that have appeared again and the wax fills them and once you remove it, it's gone. And that's after sort of five or 10 minutes of it being left. Uh, look, a lot of the product is gone because it's it's gone into the pores of the, of the flow coat, of the gel coat. Uh, so it's it's dried sort of very quick. Now to take it off, it just falls off. That's what we're left with. And then we have a restored 28 year old gel coat that had number imprints, faded, chalky, spider cracks, everything. <laughs> 